Good morning, everybody. My name's Cecilia, and my family and I homestead in Eastern North Carolina. We are going to move the goats, which we've done before, and you've seen that we move them through the woods, but I've never really explained about moving Premier One fencing through the woods, just on the areas that are cleared and easy to do. So for anybody who has a wooded property or is considering a wooded property and you're considering using goats to push through that property, I thought we'd kind of go through and give you a little overview and review of Premier One in a wooded environment, which is very different than using it on cleared pasture land. So we are out here with the girls. They're right there. Matt's taking the uh, chainsaws and all the stuff we need and I'm going to explain how we do this. Okay, so Matt and I had the powwow for the week. We uh, have to move them every week. The forage with two strands of, what is that, 165 foot netting only lasts these goats about a week, depending on how much forage is in there. And some of these areas are very heavily forested and brushed, as you can see. So, we deal with things like this. A ditch which Matt has put these little logs across so he can get the mower across and so we don't have to jump. We're just going to shove some logs underneath of it so the goats don't get out. But the path is going to go, it's hard to see this, right that way. Our shooting range is on the other side of this wooded area and is a big, it's probably at least 40 feet wide. Um, it's a big break. We've been trying to put a fire break all around the woods. So it's going there, we're going to bring it over and then he's going to cut a line back this way. It is not easy to do this with Premier One netting through the woods over uneven territory. This stuff is meant to be done in a pasture setting. However, it is doable. So as we set the fence back up, I'm going to kind of go through all the little challenges we meet and how we overcome them. That way, if you're going to do it and you're thinking, oh, it's too hard, it's not worth it. It is worth it. It just takes a little patience and um, MacGyvering. So uh, Matt's about got the chainsaw ready and we're going to start cutting stuff. What's that long thing called? Huh? The long thing. What's it called? It's a string trimmer with a brush blade on it. FS240R. It 2.3 horsepower for a string trimmer it's got a lot of power but it costs half the price of steel's brush cutters with the handlebars so yeah. you macgyvered it oh rigged it just put a brush blade on a string trimmer and it, <laughs> you cut through three inch sapling so hey i'm happy with it yeah that probably means something to a lot of you. Actually, that tool has come in so handy because we have a lot of brush and small saplings. It cuts down on time, but uh, I don't know what any of that technical stuff means. Yeah. Okay, so we have gone through with the chainsaw and whatever that other thing is that he uses, and then Corbin used the push lawn mower. Cut our path here. It goes back over the ditch that way and comes all this stuff is going to be theirs they're going to love it so hopefully we have enough netting if not we may have to grab a second roll but we or a third roll but we hate doing that and then we're just coming back this way so you ready to move goats <clears throat> hello are oh, you talking to me yeah uh, i'm just here to cut stuff you almost said a bad word on YouTube. Yes,
Good job, Hazel! She didn't jump, that's for sure. Hello. Jumping over the ditch. Okay. What we're doing. okay, so we've got one strand of fence up. We never set the fence here. Hopefully it's so dark under here. You can see why we're trying to clear it out because there's so much growth that sunlight really doesn't get here. Doesn't grow grass or anything. Just grow, just grows shrubs and weeds. So the kids are gonna grab the second line of fencing. Fingers crossed I think we'll make it. But um, we never set it perfectly the first time. It will take much longer. My recommendation is if you're moving through woods is just go set your stakes and then you can walk behind and make everything nice and tight. That's kind of the approach we have. We tried originally to just set each post perfectly and it ended up taking so much longer. So we just walk it out, set the stakes up, make sure our fence is where we want it and that it will be clear so that it won't ground out. And then we go back and we tighten everything up. So we'll get the second line out and then we'll show you how we do that. Everything is up. I'm gonna take you to the fence line real quick, but this little shade awning thing works pretty good. Hazel's being ridiculous. She's trying to stand on the skeleton of it and I called her a nut and Corbin goes, hey, isn't that a hazelnut? So now we're calling her hazelnut. But anyway, that works really well in mild conditions, which it is right now. We get a little rain from time to time and a little wind. If it's gonna be a storm warning, I just walk them back to the barn, but gives them some more cozy to sit under. Okay, so for the fence line, these, black step-in posts. They're very rigid, so they help hold it up. Um, we usually do that toward the corners, and I say toward the corners because this fence is honestly easier to set up if you don't have corners, which when we're going through the woods, it's difficult to set a perfect corner, so it works well with there being little bends in it. Everything sets pretty straight, so we use those in the saggy parts, and then so we use those in the saggy parts and where we're able to, we also tend to use the trees because where the fence would lean in, you can just tie off to a tree and then it all sits relatively straight. Two strands of 165 was perfect. There's a ton of foliage in here, not to mention, if you look up, there's a ton of foliage up there on these smaller trees that are gonna get cut down anyway. So we usually let them come in, clear out what they want to. We'll come back probably in about three days, cut the small trees down, that buys us another three to four days, and then we move them at the end of the week. So the schedule works really well for this amount and size of goats with this space and as much foliage as we have in our woods right now. So I guess Matt's cutting a few logs we have taken the fence over the ditch and we just need to drop a few logs so the goats don't figure out there's a hole underneath the fence. The box is set up. We do not have water out here. The, um, and I'm not dragging hoses all the way into the woods. So, look at her. <laughs> so, what we do is we get, let me see. We use the buckets with wow. lids from Lowe's and actually Walmart has them cheaper. We fill them up, we pull them out here on the cart and we leave them about three or four buckets. Since it's so nice and cool in these woods, we'll last these girls all week, if not a little bit more. We have little feed pans. We have their minerals in those pans. They get fed their feed. Why are you eating my pants? Hey, quit eating my pants! Quit eating my pants! Davin! Davin's being bad. Anyway. And in the summer, hey Aspen! Aspen girl! It's nice and cool and shady for Aspen, huh? It's so nice in here. It can be a solid 
10, 15 degrees cooler back here in the woods than it is in the open areas. So as much as I didn't like the trees in the beginning, I definitely appreciate them now. And it'll be beautiful because some of the canopy will be reduced as we clear. It should grow some more grass in here along with the underbrush, which is fine if it comes back because it's food for the goats. But um, I'm really excited to be back here. It's an area of the woods that we can't see. And as soon as it's cleared out, it's gonna just look like a really pretty little sort of blade or um, what's it called when there are trees and not meadow, because that's an open grassland. I don't know what I'm going for, but a pretty shaded, yeah, but like more open than it is now. Cause like, look, you can't see back there, right? So you'll be able to see through the trees. It won't be so cluttered and everything will be a lot healthier. So we're gonna get our pans and our water set up and we're gonna call it a day, but that's how we run, run Premier One fencing through the woods with our goats. Okay, they are happy and content. The waters are prepped for the week, popped off. They have their feed bowls. Um, it smells amazing in these woods. I don't even know what the smell is. It smells like magnolia and honeysuckle and something else, but I don't even see honeysuckle. And I think the only magnolia we have is up by the barn. I'm not even sure, but it smells so nice. I can't wait till all of this is cleared out and we can see how pretty it is back here. It's gonna be a grove. That's the word I was looking for. All right, I gotta help Corbin load the little lawnmower in the cart and I'm gonna take a quick nap, nap before work. I uh, will see you guys next time. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.